going to do another training video this week on chilled water air handling units. Uh, got one here above my shoulder. We just installed this unit this week uh, in a Foot Locker store, a Champ store. But we're going to take this opportunity to do a training video on chilled water changeovers, how to drain coils if they need it to be done. I've already walked to the mall at this uh, at this location. Talk to the mall people. Know that this mall is not glycol. Know that uh, this mall wants us to drain these coils for the winter. So I'm going to get up on the ladders here. We're going to open and close some valves and show you guys kind of the process of how this should work. How I have uh, done it in years past. There's maybe a better way, but I'm going to show you how I've been doing it. So uh, we're going to get started here today. Here's the unit we've been working on. Uh, Again, this unit is not glycol, and we know that these coils need to be drained in the winter. Uh, while I'm up here, I'm going to give you guys a quick view. This unit has an economizer. The upper dampers here are the indoor dampers. These dampers here are the outdoor dampers to the unit for, for free cooling air. But uh, So we've got this unit shut off. We're in the store, we're going to, here's the water valve shutoffs, the supply and return. Go ahead, Brian, you want to start closing those off? We're going to close the supply and return valves. You guys notice that these are gate valves. Uh, some of these malls are built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So uh, uh, sometimes these valves don't close all the way. So don't just close these valves and drain the water out and assume. I'm going to show you guys kind of a foolproof way I've, I've figured out over the years to make sure these coils are drained. So we've got the water valve shut off. I'm going to back up the camera here so you guys can see. This unit has a, has a drain in it, piped. We've taken this drain with a ball valve on it, put a barbed fitting onto the ball valve, ran a piece of poly tubing back over here, and tied that poly tubing into the condensate drain so when it's time to do a chilled water changeover on this unit it's pretty quick and easy there's a vent up above that we can open but the first thing we would do is we would simply open the ball valve here the beauty of having the poly tubing guys is you can see Brian can you take that cap off of there and we'll open the vent and show them that we got a little as the vent opens you guys will get more water I think let's drain the whole thing Brian so I want to make a point here, I guess. Uh, I'm going to keep looking around here, guys, while, while this is happening. But as you guys can see, the water coming out of here. The reason I put a piece of poly tubing on here is, if you shut these valves, open this drain, let's say you drain this to a uh, bucket with a garden hose, and you drain it till all the water is drained out, and then you close that valve and walk away for the winter, what happens if those two valves leak a little bit? it will fill this this coil you think is drained will slowly fill back up over the winter and you'll be at risk of freezing and cracking a coil in the winter time the only way you can guarantee these coils will not freeze in the winter is to drain these coils and leave this drain this valve open so that it has a permanent drain so it can it will remain drained all winter long if those valves leak and after an hour of you doing your checks and changing filters and doing your change over here, you still have water draining out of this pipe. You know that those valves need to be replaced. And either we will quote to do that, or if they're big pipes and, and it's uh, too big of a job for us, we would uh, have a pipe fitter, have the customer hire a pipe fitter and come out and replace those valves. You can see we're kind of starting to get some air here on this unit to where the coil drains down. But uh, this is a way that I've been doing it for quite a few years. You don't have to bring buckets into the stores anymore. You don't have to bring hoses in the stores. It takes all of the pain in the ass out of draining coils on these units. And the beauty of this, guys, is you walk into a store that doesn't have this on it, you quote it to the customer. You actually get paid to come in and make your job easier every year. So you get paid to come in and do this so that next year your job is easier when it's chilled water changeover time. Uh, with that said, while well, this is draining, guys, I'm going to come down and we're going to uh, we're going to restart this unit. And uh, the next thing you'd want to do on these is you have to know that the economizers work. 
because now that we've shut off the chilled water for the year, the only cooling this customer has is outdoor air from the roof here at this store, free cooling. So we're going to start restart this unit and uh, show you some of the checks we would go through. First thing you have to do is test the freeze stat on this unit to verify that it works. So, okay guys, you can see on the drain here, we've had this drain in for a while, a little time lapse, but we pretty much have no water coming out of this drain anymore. That's what you want at the end of the day. If this keeps just draining water, you know, trickling out of here uh, for hours and hours on end, then you've got one of these valves that's leaking. It's not isolating the water from the mall, and it'll just continue to refill your coil all winter long. So what I'm gonna show you inside of here is we're going to, I got a, a couple of partners here with me today. We're gonna simulate the freeze stat tripping on this unit. Um, when I open the door here, I'm gonna show you the dampers. This duct here, so you all remember, this is air coming in from outside. So this is fresh air from the roof into the unit. Up on top of the unit up here is the return. It's just an open plenum return. So what you're gonna see when I open this door is that uh, the dampers to the left of me here are gonna be the outside dampers. This unit is in full economizer mode right now. And the indoor dampers are shut. So if you imagine it's winter time, and then we're gonna simulate what would happen if the freeze stat tripped. So let me show you what we're looking at here quick. Economizer mode. Now we're going to to uh, trip the freeze stat, and uh, it's going to get a little loud, guys. But I'm going to show you what you guys can hear. That the actuator is spring returning because we've killed the power to it. That's how you want to wire in your freeze stat so that it kills the the 24 volt power to your actuator. You want to make sure your outside dampers are 100% shut. Your indoor dampers are going to be open, but you're more concerned about the outside dampers being 100% shut in a power outage and when the freeze stat trips. So a few other things we want to look for here, guys, is uh, foot locker, especially while we're on a foot locker store here. This is all good information or good recommendations for any customer, but Foot locker requires temperature gauges, uh, supply, supply, and return. They require pressure gauges. This is the return water. This is the supply water. I wanted to point something out here while I'm up here, everyone, because this is something that's a little confusing at times to some people, and it seems to be backwards logic, but let me explain it to you. This is the supply water to this unit. This is the return water. Now those of you, this is a little bit of a different actuator at this mall, so it's not the best video, but this is the water valve. This is the water valve that controls the chilled water. This is in the return pipe, the water going out of the unit. Some of you are gonna ask why would you do that? You always wanna make sure that that coil in the unit is full of water, full of water to the top with no air in it. When we shut the water off, we've just stopped the water flow through the coil. You never wanna have this water on the inlet side so don't make the, the the incorrect assumption that because you see this valve here that this is the supply pipe this should be the return water this is the supply water you always want to guarantee the water is full or the coil is full of water and you do that by pumping water in the bottom and fills the coil so the coil all the tubes are 100 percent saturated with water all the time now something else that is required by many of our customers uh, should be required by us. I always recommend it is a uh, emergency pan or a drip pan underneath the unit. This store did not have one before, so we installed one. We simply used some Unistrut, had a condensate pan built, and then we also installed wet switches inside of the pan. These are just hockey pucks with a little felt pad on the bottom. They sense moisture on them. These are much more reliable than float switches. Float switches sit here in the pan. The pan gets bent. People lay filters and filter hooks and stuff in them. I've seen far too many 
emergency pans with float switches in them that never tripped and there's water overflowing from the pan so this pan does not have a drain on it it is just here as an emergency pan once these switches sense water these switches cut all power to this unit and shut the unit off so you'll get a call for no air conditioning they won't know why it's not air conditioning but if you get here and there's water in this pan don't just simply turn the unit on it's got water in the pan for a reason and not a good reason this is not the condensate pan for this unit um, you don't put a pump in here and pump water out of here if, if there's water in this pan the drain is plugged so um, with all that said a uh, couple other things we want to go over is uh, something you all might have noticed on this unit is uh, that it is a two pipe system what we call a two pipe system this unit is chilled water only in those two pipes so it doesn't appear that there's any heat here but what we found after we started this project is there is an electric strip heat unit in the ductwork on the sales floor and I'm going to take a little break here and we're going to go out to the sales floor and, uh, and show you that just to to make a point that you have to go looking for the stuff sometimes it's not going to jump right out and, and let you know where it's at okay guys this is where the electric heat is in this unit I'm going to climb up in here so that you understand that it this stuff is not always where you expect it to be if you guys can all see this it's an inline induct electric strip heat unit it's on the other side of the firewall there's the disconnect for it we had to wire into this during our process here we had to add a relay to it and some controls but it's a two-stage electric heat uh, and then just chilled water coil for air conditioning for the unit in the back. Okay guys, I'm going to finish this off with just a, a basic overview of chilled water air handlers and chilled water systems. I've done a couple of videos on these in the past, so I encourage you to go back and, and revisit those because it's that time of year right now for chilled water. The chilled water systems are getting shut off for the winter. So we've got two pipes here. The mall supplies chilled water to this unit. There's a large coil or a radiator in this unit that chilled water runs through. Air is drawn through the unit and it just cool, cold air gets blown out to the store. Uh, what you want to remember on calls on these is the malls don't always run the chillers. The malls run the chillers based on outside air temperature. This mall I know this because I talked to the mall guys before we started this project. Below 60 degrees outside air, the mall shuts the chillers off, so there is no chilled water available. So below 60 degrees, this unit has to have an economizer to cool. When the, the temperature tomorrow gets up to 80 degrees here in uh, southern Wisconsin, then the mall would start the chiller back up again. So keep those things in mind when you're working chilled water malls. Don't be afraid of the mall guys. They are your friends. Go talk to them and find out if they're running the chiller or not. That way you know which end of the unit you need to work on. I wanted to show you guys uh, one controller. Some of you know this controller. This is probably by far one of my favorite pieces of hardware on the market today. This is a Honeywell Jade Economizer Control. I use this for my controller of choice on chilled water air handlers. I'm going to show you why for some obvious reasons. This one here, it shows us right now economizer available now. So it's, it assumes that the, it's telling me that the outside air temp is not okay to economize. Economizing, no. Hoping you guys can see that in the video. Occupied, yes. So the building is occupied. Cool Y1 in is off, so the thermostat is not calling for first stage cooling not calling for second stage cooling and then it's Y2 in and Y2 out this little controller is really nice so the ins and outs in is from the thermostat out is to the to the equipment mixed air temp currently on this unit is 70 degrees unit is satisfied remember that it's not economizing not running chilled water 
outdoor air temperature is 63 degrees, and this unit has a dry bulb temperature sensor on it, not entropy. Damper out, this tells me the 2 to 10 volt DC signal going out to my actuator for my economizer. You can actually ramp that up and down in here for testing purposes, which is really nice on a Honeywell. Exhaust one, this unit has, I'm gonna show you guys this, this unit, because this mall is chilled water. This mall, every store has a power exhaust fan in the store. It's basically just a, a power exhaust fan on the roof, a PRV as we call it, up in the box up there. We had to incorporate that into our controls when this unit's economizer gets over, when the damper is 50% open or more, this Jade controller energizes an exhaust output right here, which turns on our exhaust fan on the roof. So we're pulling in air from outside and we're sucking the hot air, sucking the hot air out of the store. It helps to cool the store off faster. Uh, mechanical cool on, it tells you zero. Now, just so you guys don't get confused, mechanical cool for this controller, it doesn't know what it's controlling, so mechanical cooling here would be the chilled water coils. And that's it for this unit, for, uh, for all the set points you can run through. One of the reasons, as you guys can tell by looking at this, you can scroll through this, it tells you the outdoor air temp, tells you the mixed air temp. This thing, without even opening a door, I can really kind of tell what this unit is doing and how it's running. So, uh, I think that's about all I've got, you guys, for this week on this video. Um, don't let these units scare you, but know that there are many kinds of controllers. There's no two malls that are alike. Uh, some malls require a certain kind of control, backnet controller, so that the mall can communicate. Uh, something else I forgot to mention, guys, this story, there's a duct detector up there. This mall does not have a fire system, but whenever you're working on these units, um, if you're going to be testing electric heat, make sure you've talked to the mall first. If you're going to start up an electric heat unit that hasn't been ran in a while, you're going to burn some dust off and uh, you could be tripping some smoke detectors. Um, I think that's all I've got this uh this week everyone so i'm hoping that this helps you i'll probably do a couple more videos on chilled water air handlers um but for now this is dave signing off have a good week guys